Alright guys, welcome to my channel. I'm right here in Hong Kong with my man Pry. We just finished an amazing arm and shoulder day today. Barely moved the arms. Yeah, we did. And <laughs> this was much fun. So yeah, quick introduction for my man right here, Brian Leon from Hong Kong. Yeah, just introduce yourself quickly for the viewers. My name is Brian. I am a pro national bodybuilder. I want my pro status in 2022 in Muscle Mayhem in Sacramento. I won the overall there. And uh, yeah, Dirk and I have been planning to compete against each other next year. Next year at well. So this will be uh, this will be much fun. And yeah, the main thing is like last year Brian was in Bangkok. We got some training down there. Almost died. Training at Muscle Factory, right? In Muscle some, Factory. Uh, 500 milligrams caffeine, I remember. At 8 p.m.? 8 p.m., yeah. yeah. <laughs> this was fun. So yeah, now I'm here in Hong Kong. We got like again like three sessions down and we always make fun about like, hey, we would be actual training partners on the regular that we probably would need to deload every other week yeah. or we would need to go down to like three days training a week to in order to recover because uh, we have that friendly rivalry thing going on obviously like, said, like some Goku and Vegeta yeah. where we're like okay every set needs to count and we yeah. really push ourselves and we didn't throw ground. ourselves to the ground throughout the last three sessions we did in Hong Kong right oh 100% yeah. I remember back but I think it was even worse that we slapped our backs yeah, <laughs> did, yeah. <laughs> but that's so, one thing about yeah. training partner because it's so hard to find somebody that clicks uh, I'm quite fortunate to have one in Hong Kong his name is Matt uh, we train around yesterday. the same time together, training philosophy is almost the same. Exactly. And uh, I think we almost need some sort of difference in dynamics and um, character to make it work. So I'm a bit more um, diligent in execution. Yeah. He is a little more pushy on the weight, yes. so we kind of complement each other pretty well. Um, but I do know that it's quite hard to find a training partner and that's why you train alone, right? Yeah, that's why you go along and I'm usually always training alone because my thing is like I would rather train alone instead of someone where I don't match with because it can really impact your training in a yeah. bad or in a good way because if you train with someone who is there to like just talk, small talk and not really take training serious, it can affect your training unconsciously and if you have someone like you, we have the same goals, the same mentality, yeah. the mindset and the same approach to training like the same training style so to yeah. speak where we kind of yeah we know like he you call, can call me out like okay the essential goes so fast that yeah. stuff and if you have someone who just has the mentality of like hey let's slam maximum weights they try to push you in a way what doesn't align with your goal yeah. so that is like a great thing and something i really miss having that in bangkok but yeah that's why we yeah we yeah. just need live quite close which is cool like me and Bangkok in Hong Kong it's just yeah, a quick perfect. fly so we can every few months speed up and get some training down yeah so and I believe uh, we did a shoulder and arm day which you're about to show yeah that is what I am going to show you right now guys going to do a little voiceover and describe everything in detail and yeah and from there we basically go so yeah good here we go yeah Okay, so on this day, Brian joined me for my session, which is basically like, let's say the first session of my week. So I always come off here with like one or two consecutive rest days in a row. So I'm like the most fresh for that one because it's basically like my weak point or one of my most important sessions of the week, basically most of all like dealt um, arm day. So a lot of arm work because that is a big part I want to improve on my frame as a, yeah, as a Bantam athlete basically, like getting bigger arms, this can make a huge, huge difference on stage. So the first movement right here was the rear delt dom row. So you see right here like we're doing four sets into partials, like here you see the partials Brian is doing and we really squeeze, try to squeeze out everything on those it's a movement i really like and once you went to, into the groove with that one it just feels amazing honestly so keeping my scap pretty much still on that one and really like it's a kind of like let them movement like i imagine it that way but just with my arms more spread out so i keep my scap pretty much still so here after we are moving on to the interior delt press and the cool thing with doing the weird delt rows before that one i feel is having a pump in the weird delts makes the interior delt press even more efficient i feel like i'm even more stable i have even better output on that one and yeah so here we are doing like straight sets to almost failure we did three sets and 
over here we are at uh, yeah lateral races so we're doing like a marathon set on this one so honestly one set 25 to 35 reps and the main reason for that is that we get a very good pump in we squeezing everything out of the of the shortened range. I feel like higher reps is much better on shortened bias movements. And on the other way around, if you want to do more lengthened bias work, having the rep range a little bit lower so we can be a little heavier and then also having like even more tension within the stretch position. And yeah, so we're getting a good pump on here. So after we're jumping to the lateral waist machine, we can just feel the stretch a little better and we already have like a lot of stimulus squeezed out of those shortened ranges here so yeah going to total failure so once i don't get the muscle fully shortened anymore i am done so i don't cheat much here i keep everything stable and controlled and yeah here we are doing myo reps so this is the last few reps of my myo web activation set as you can see like when it comes to myo webs you really want to go to area zero before you go into the myo webs boom five seconds rest two reps and you can see here this is all the my web set so those webs are all basically efficient webs as you can see here like i go into the next set and it's directly in rpe 9 and 10 and this way with my webs the cool thing is yeah we are directly getting those very very hard webs in with a shorter amount of time it's a very very nice method to throw in here and there especially like on isolation work on arms and delts and also calves i really like it or leg extensions or leg curls if you really really if you really like the the burn so yeah here also into partials after i hit 20 reps so i do like 10 to 15 as the activation set and then i rest for like about five seconds and do like yeah do like two reps until i hit 20 reps in total and then i go into partials so here you see brian doing the final few reps on that one here he resting, like we counted down like one, five, four, three, two, one, go. And I counted even a little bit too fast sometimes. So Point didn't have enough rest, but man, he did a great job on, on that one. So yeah, you can really see here, like it's always the speed of the webs basically. So you can see with the Maya webs, you be going to the next sets and the speed is very slow. And you know, with the concentric speed is even though we want to be fast, it is slow. It's also, if it's very slow, it's often a sign that like, hey, we are like getting every muscle fiber activated and yeah, basically getting everything out of that, that movement. So the next one was triceps rope extensions. And this was the same thing, same thing as with the, with the, with the lateral waist before. So 25 to 35 reps really squeezing everything out of those length uh, shortened ranges right here before we moving on to a little bit more length biased movement and and yeah and i was telling brian like oh damn like <laughs> the shade is still having some triceps duration six weeks after prep which is a it's a good sign so again like with with preps it gets that much more efficient not only during the prep but also afterwards where i remember my first prep like i gained like six seven kg within a week and i'm still like about two or three kg below what i had last prep after a week and i feel great so that is always a very very good sign of like let's say after a prep how yeah how fast you feel back normal again without yeah getting fat way way too quick right we need to gain some body fat back that is essential very yeah, it's really individual for like the individual body fat set point. Like mine is very, very low naturally. For others, it's a little bit higher. But if we really yeah, fry ourselves up during the prep, basically, it the body wants even more fat, even be above the range just to feel safe. So it's always a sign after the prep, how efficient the prep was as well. So yeah, that was the last few reps for, for Prime. You can see gone that is yeah absolute killer and then here we're moving on to like across the body triceps extensions somewhat more length and biased uh, three sets eight to twelve i believe it was so eight three sets two failure that is basically it great movement i really really like it it's like it's, it's one of those movements which feel very very natural right like some movements we're just doing them and 
it just feels like we're feeling like a robot doing it where we don't need to think it just feels great it feels natural and also our joints yeah really like those kinds of movements so when the movement feels like very very unnatural after a while we might can get some pain so we should always listen to the body that's also a yes very very important part so squat curls right here that again 25 to 35 reps and you see the trend everything which is extremely shortened by so this movement is basically you can't get the biceps shorter on any other movement it's kind of like an arnie curl just on a, on a cable so here again getting everything out of the shortened getting a good good pump in and yeah really grinding out those last few reps you can see on my on my face getting wet like a tomato <laughs> and yeah after Poing is doing it on on that one and and after we moved on to uh, yeah my webs again with with dumbbell curls and what i really really like currently is like doing that like just on a lat pull down with with the back arm supported and what it does is just making keeping our joints more stable we can generate more output this way and we can really just thinking about yeah generating output and really keeping the biceps super 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 isolated on on that one it's a bit bit like the you probably know like the biceps crushers like what arnold schwarzenegger also put on his neck it's kind of like that single arm where we can yeah get anything out so yeah here are my webs again i think i did like 12 and then like two webs again five seconds webs uh rest two webs again little rest two webs again little rest two webs again and then as well as on all the other movements so here i cut the video that you can see all the all the myo webs basically like all the two webs i do like after the, the five second rest and yeah and once used to it it's it's a very very nice method to try to put in also here the partials and that's also the good thing with the back arm support i feel like the partials so much more efficient compared of not having it Right? If you don't have it, it's just a little harder to get those those reps in. But with that, we can really, really, yeah, squeeze everything out. And that's why, yeah, just two, like, just the, those myo reps, myo sets is needed. And it was just one set before, like, with the squat girls. And we're getting, yeah, we could barely move our arms after that session. So here, Prine is doing it as well great technique so that is a thing like we said before we're having a very similar training style what we focus on is basically maximum intensity while keeping the muscle under fire and getting as much tension as possible it doesn't look as traumatic maybe as some other training styles right like we don't we don't yell we don't like move our body like crazy it looks a little robotic right and it might don't look like that we don't train as hard but i tell you what it is extremely hard like i did every like lots of training styles and with this that's a skill basically i feel like we need to go through that period to some extent where we train a little bit more like a maniac a little bit more crazy to get those hard shell because what I see often if people try that side, they, they truly train too too soft, not hard enough. And that is the the secret behind that is basically like, yeah, like easy put, like keeping the muscle under fire and doing it while having max intensity. And this gave me like those results from 21 to 23 was honestly the, the main driver was my change in training style. Like really, really the quality above anything else is you shouldn't focus on some magic supplements or some magic programming or movement really making the quality higher is the best advice i can give what i do also with my clients that's why i want all my clients to send me lots of training clips because the main thing is honestly that like a high intensity and a high quality on movement that is basically the secret of getting like let's say weak arms stronger or a week back better it's honestly really like the the execution above yes any anything else and it gets better over time it's it's a it's a skill a big skill and sometimes people want to say like hey bodybuilding it's like it's so easy it's like no real sport but it's so much more it's really like i did parkour before and i can tell you like 
as much of a backflip as a skill. The same is like like lifting. It's it's honestly a skill which gets better and better over time. And I can see people, I can tell if someone is highly advanced as a lifter or if someone is still like, let's say, more like in the intermediate stages, I can just tell by how they lift. So yeah, that is, that is a big one. Here, the, the final one point is doing this variation because uh, his shoulder making some issues. Like for some people doing the across the body triceps extensions can cause some issues. I have it with, with dumbbells, so I don't do them anymore. But with a cable, my, my shoulder is totally fine. And yeah, here's some posing, a little preview. So next year we're going against each other. I think the first show will be in Taiwan, the WMBF Pro Show. And, but the main one, the main one will be WMBF Worlds in Boston next year. So this would be a huge battle. We are very good friends. It's a kind of like friendly rival we think like Point say like Son Goku and, and Vegeta. And that, that's what I love about training. I want yeah, I want to go against guys like like Point where it's really like apple apples were versus oranges, right? Where it's like it's it's not clear who, who wins. And that is what drives me. I, I'm never the guy who wants to have like an easy win or anything. It's like yeah, I want to go. Uh, I want to play that game at the hardest level possible. That is one of my main drivers. And yeah, posing is going great. Like I still keep some posing in during my off season because hey, in no time the next like in July the the prep will start and it's really boosts my training right now. A big goal for me is basically like yeah, improving my physique to a big extent in such a short time and. This would be amazing. Like lots of reasons why I want to do it. I might explain it on another video. But yeah, that is some some of the poses. We did like all the symmetry, all the muscularity poses. And it will be exciting because Prime made so much progress within that short time. Like from yeah, like the when he won the overall at Muscle Mayhem was now it's it's worse. And for him it's the same like me. I think he agrees as well. It's Honestly, like the training style, what made such a difference in, in physique while eating enough, keeping recovery high and so on. But yeah, here we're ending it. That is it for our vlog in Hong Kong. Next one, I will probably do myself in Bangkok and Brian comes in March to Bangkok. Uh, yeah, that is the plan. All right, guys.